morning, church. It's fantastic to have you with us here at Quippers Essex online. We're on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you're watching us for the first time, an extra big welcome to you too. So as we go into worship now, let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare ourselves to hear everything that God has for us. Over to the worship team.
so much to the worship team. Wasn't that fantastic worship? And now, if it's okay, I'd love to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will come upon each and every person watching today, Lord. Father, I believe that it's a season of new things. Father, I believe it's a season of birthing new things and raising old dreams back to life, Lord. And so, Father, I just pray for each and every person watching who's had dreams and who's believing for things, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just bring them back to life, Lord. Father, we're believing for health. We're believing for finances, Lord. We're believing for careers. All of those things where people have begun to feel disillusioned, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just raise them up, Lord. That you would bring back their faith in such a strong way for these things, Father. Because you are almighty, Lord. We thank you for today, and we thank you for everything that you have for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we've got our notices coming up on the screen. 
this week, Tuesday, our youth have got their Brave Age Camp, which is going to be fantastic for them. So let's really pray. Let's really believe that they have a fantastic encounter with God. And last week, we had our baptisms. We had 11 baptisms, which is absolutely fantastic. And so here are a few pics. And now it's time for our giving, which is going to be fantastic. So you can see at the bottom of the screen how to give. And let's, let's be really generous. Let's really get behind this because, you know, God loves a cheerful giver. So let's do that. I'll give you a moment or two. Okay, and now we're going to go into our preach with Mark Collard, who is the lead pastor at Equippers Surrey. So uh, let's pass over to him. Let's, let's really get excited about this because I think it's going to be good. Well, come on, wherever you are watching this morning, whether you're on your couch at home, whether you're in a watch party service, how about putting your hands together for a moment, giving our amazing God some praise for what a powerful testimony, amen? There is nothing that God cannot do, amen? And maybe you're watching this morning and you are having the same kind of struggles that Glenn was having. Well, I pray you are encouraged this morning that a seed of hope, is going into your heart that we do not lead to live under the diagnosis that we've been given on this planet, but rather we have a heavenly Father who is able to lead us into all victory. Come on, can I get a strong amen this morning? God is so good, isn't he? And now, as Monica said, this is the start of Mental Health Awareness Week, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff planned. We'd love you to be part of it, and uh, just make sure you're tuning in on social media, and uh, that'll keep you up to date. But I'm going to be speaking uh, this morning a little bit into something that I think is going to help you in this area. Uh, next Sunday, uh, Dr. Lavinia uh, will be doing a follow-up message, uh, which I know is going to help you as well. But let me go straight to the Word of God. I love starting uh, messages with God's Word. Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. Here's what it says. It says, On the seventh day, God had finished His work of creation, so He rested from all His work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when He rested from all of His work of creation. Pretty powerful scripture this morning. God made the world in the six days, but on the seventh day, he took a day to rest. Not because he was tired, not because he was worn out or burnt out, but because he was giving us a pattern of what is healthy for us to maintain our lives. Let me take a moment just to set up this message. You know, we in many ways are facing a bit of a crisis in the world. Uh, you know, by many, many metrics, the world is becoming a better place to live. Uh, many metrics will show you that uh, some of the things we once were dealing with uh, decades ago are actually getting significantly better. However, there is a metric that actually shows on another scale, for many people, things are getting worse. And that is in the whole area of their mental health, their ability to make sound decisions, not to live with stress, not to live with anxiety. And this morning, I want to talk a little bit about that. We live in a world where we are never off and we are never unplugged. We live in a world where we are never quiet and we live in a world where we are never not bombarded by tasks, information, obligations, stimulations, and aggravations. Isn't that true? We live in a world where our minds are constantly uh, under the pressure of information all the time, and it's not helping us. It's actually causing us, uh, for many people, to struggle to feel worn out and to feel burnt out. Here's what Stephen Covey said. Stephen Covey, well-known author, written some famous books. He actually wrote this statement 25 years or over 25 years ago. So this is before, um, to the best of my knowledge, the birth of the smartphone. 
before, uh, you know, probably, I guess the internet was in, in existence, but certainly not in the way it is today. And, and email communication was probably just starting to really get going. Here's what Stephen Covey wrote. He said, people expect us to be busy and overworked. It's become a status symbol in our society. If we are busy, we're important. If we're not busy, we're almost embarrassed to admit it. Now, come on, how many of you that know that's true? If I say to you, how, do you, how is your week? Uh, you know, you're, you, you, you probably want to let me know. Well, I, well, it's been a busy week. It's been busy. My life is full. It's been busy. Why? Because, uh, you know, when we feel like we're busy, we feel like we're important, and it's almost embarrassing to say, well, I had a pretty good week, thank you. Uh, it wasn't too crazy. Uh, I worked a, a, a regular or a reasonable number of hours. I had some time off, thank you very much, and I'm feeling good. That is not the usual language that we hear from one another, and I believe we've got to actually address it and look at turning it around. You know, the rise of technology has been a blessing and a curse all at the same time. Technology has helped us in so many different ways. It makes our life easier in many ways. On the other hand, technology has accelerated the pace of life. It has extended our work days and has broken down the barrier between the workplace and the home. And so now we are constantly connected to our places of work, constantly connected to people right around the world. And, you know, through things like WhatsApp and things like that, just about anybody can get to you if they wish to do so. And stress is becoming a significant part of many, many of our lives. In fact, uh, it is thought that five out of the six leading causes of death is actually stress-related, and that up to 90% of all doctor visits, get this, up to 90% of all visits to the doctor are for stress-related issues. We have a constant stream of busyness that is slowly wearing us down physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Somebody put it like this, we have overburdened minds and we have under-rested souls. I think that puts it perfectly. We have overburdened mind and under-rested souls. And so here we are at the start of this Mental Health Awareness Week. And I want to let you know this morning that we've good news because as the church, uh, as followers of Christ, As readers of the word, we have got an answer to the problems that not only the world are facing, that perhaps you are facing this morning. The title of my message this morning is simply this. It's the Sabbath, the Sabbath, God's forgotten command. The Sabbath, God's forgotten command. Go with me to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, reading from verse 8. And Exodus 20, if you don't know it, it's where the Ten Commandments have been given to Moses. And, uh, you know, in those Ten Commandments, we, we read things like, do not lie, do not steal, do not murder, do not commit adultery. Things like, uh, serve the Lord God as your only God. Uh, all those amazing commandments. And then we come to this commandment in verse 8. Here's what it says. It says this, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. Everyone say, I got six days to do my ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day and it is dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock and foreigners living among you. For six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth and the sea and everything in them. For in six days, a big pardon, he made them. On the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he set it apart as holy. I want to talk to you for a few moments this morning about having a Sabbath day in your week. 
about having a Sabbath day in your week. You might say to me, Mark, what is a Sabbath day? A Sabbath day, according to the Word of God, is a day where you do no work that is your ordinary work. What is our ordinary work? Our ordinary work is, is, is you know, the kind of work we may do for our, our vocation. Ordinary work is you know, the, the work you do for your pay, the work you do for your employer, or the work you do that brings finances into your home. Not only that, ordinary work is the work that we all do that we don't get paid for. How many of you know in life we've got work we do we get paid for, and we've got work we do we don't get paid for? Uh, the work we do we don't get paid for is things like mowing the lawn, going to the bank and doing the finances, cleaning the bathroom or whatever it might be, washing the car, uh, taking the kids to school, picking them up, taking them to a club, whatever it might be. We've all got work we get paid for, and then we've got work we don't get paid for. And a Sabbath day is one day in your week where you do not do your ordinary work. You don't do the work that brings your finances in and you don't do the work that is needed to run your home. You do all of that in six days, but for one day, you have a day that you get to focus on God, worship Him, and do the things that bring replenishment to your life where we rest and we rejuvenate. Now, I've called this message the Sabbath, the forgotten command, because isn't it interesting that we still uh, think about things like do not steal, do not kill, do not commit adultery, honor your mom and dad, serve the Lord God as our only God. But for some reason, out of the list of 10 commandments, we have chosen to make this one optional. All the others are not optional. We, we know the others are to be followed and, and the others are for our benefit. But for some reason, uh, we have decided that we are smarter than the Word of God. We've decided that the example that has been taught to us by our Heavenly Father when He made the world in six days and rested on the seventh doesn't really count for us because we know better. Well, aren't we paying the price now? We are paying the price for our burnt out, tired, worn out lives because we have not given a day a week to rest and spend time with God, spend time with our families and to be rejuvenated. Everything that God created has a rhythm. And in the rhythm he created, there is rest. You know, if you ever watched the sea come rolling in, ever gone to the, to, to the beach, I'm sure you have, and you've watched the waves rolling in, and, and, and the waves don't just come in uh, with no break or no rhythm, that there is a rhythm to how they come. And the water comes up to the edge of the beach, and what does it do? It's like it pauses for a moment before it goes back out again. It's a rhythm. Even the tides have rhythms. You know, when you think about the earth we live in, even the earth we live in has a rhythm. It has a season of rest and it's called winter. And winter is the, re the period of replenishment and preparation for spring that is ultimately going to lead us to summer. God actually gave the children of Israel instructions on how they were to farm the land. He, he said, when you farm your land, don't farm it year in, year out with no rest. If you don't rest the land, it is not going to be fruitful. And so every few years, they would give the land a year off from producing a harvest so that it could be replenished. And throughout Scripture, we are taught over and over again, you've got to have rest. You've got to have time out. You've got to have time where you let God do His thing. So listen, let me say a couple of things this morning about the Sabbath. I want to say firstly this, the Sabbath is God's wisdom. The Sabbath is godly wisdom. Now, I, I, I know what some of you are thinking. I, I, some of you are thinking, Mark, that is Old Testament that is the old covenant, and I don't need to live under that anymore. New covenant, better way, Jesus is the way to salvation, and of course you're completely correct in part of that. 
Here's, here's what you're correct in thinking. We no longer get saved by following the commandments. That's absolutely true. You can follow every single one of those commandments and it will not lead you to salvation. The only way to salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. Can I get a big amen this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we don't need to follow these commands to the letter of the law anymore to get saved. We're saved through faith in Jesus Christ alone. However, and I want to put a big however in here this morning, just because the commandments don't lead us to salvation anymore does not mean that they are not relevant to our lives. On the contrary, they are filled with this incredible wisdom of God to make your life and to make my life work a whole lot better. How many of you know the wisdom of do not lie? Come on, that's wisdom right there. If you go through your life lying, you are not going to end up in a very healthy place. Do not murder. How many of you know there's great wisdom in do not murder? And you know, you're, not gonna, you're gonna destroy your life if you go around doing that. And I wanna say when it comes to the commandment of honoring the Sabbath, a day set apart from the others, there is wisdom in there for us that we ignore at our folly. Here's what Charles Spurgeon, uh, the, uh, the amazing preacher said. He said this, in the long run, we shall do more by sometimes doing less. In the long run, we shall do more by sometimes doing less. That is so true. Sometimes we gotta do less to actually do more. And you know, these commandments, uh, these, 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 these wisdom, uh, these statements of wisdom are there to protect our lives, when we violate them, we're actually violating the protection that God has placed around them, amen? Here's the second thing I wanna say. I wanna say this, the Sabbath is, is not a law to be followed, but it is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. I got good news for you this morning. Um, if, 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 uh, if I said to you when you arrive at church, I got a gift for you, a gift from God, you'd be all ready to receive it. What's the gift, Mark? I'm ready to receive it. I want God's gift for my life. I, I wanna tell you, God's got a gift for you in the 21st century that is gonna help clear up your mind, is gonna look after your body, is gonna look after your emotions. It's called a day off. I know, it's radical, isn't it? <laughs> it's radical. <laughs> Let me say this. Some of you just need to take the day off. Come on, go ahead, turn to your neighbor for a moment and just say, take the day off. Turn to your other neighbor, say, come on, just have a day off. Have a day where you switch off, amen? God has provided for us a lifestyle of rest. I love this. Here's what Hebrews chapter four says, Hebrews four, verse six and seven. He says this, so God's rest is there for people to enter. That's a fact. There is rest for you. If you're feeling worn out, burnt this morning, God has provided for you. He said, I've got a place of rest. Listen to this. But those who first heard this good news, he's talking about the children of Israel, failed to enter. Why? Because they disobeyed God. So check this out. God has provided a place of rest for the children of Israel. It was called the promised land. They failed to enter it because they disobeyed God. It goes on. So God set another time for entering his rest. And guess what? That time is tomorrow. That time is August when we go on holiday. That time is December, when we break for our Christmas break. No, that time is when? Today, right now, God says, I've provided a way of you living a lifestyle of rest that means you will not get burnt out, worn out. Now, let me just say this as a way of testimony. Please don't hear this as condemnation. Just please hear this as testimony. I'm 44 years of age. I gave my life to Christ at the age of eight. I've been following Jesus for 36, nearly 37 years. 
I, I'm, I'm a husband. I have four young children. I pastor a growing, significant church. I've been in ministry for nearly 20 years. And guess what? I've never been burnt out. I've never worn out. Have I had times I've been tired? Of course I have. But have I got to the end of myself? Have I got to the point where, I can't, where it's like it's, I mean, I'm on the rubbish heap? I need a year out to replenish. No. Why? I have learned to be obedient to God in this area to sustain my life. Some of you are getting so sucked dry by the people in your world. You are giving, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with helping to sustain people's lives. But if you don't have a time in your week for replenishment, not just of your spirit, but of your emotions, of, 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 your, of your brain, then you are gonna burn out. In fact, let me say this, let me make this statement this morning. Your brain needs a rest. Somebody say amen. Your brain needs a rest. Some, sometimes I was having a conversation with Monica the other day and I, was, I thought I was communicating something and she turned at me and she said, you're, you need to turn your brain off. Your brain is tired. Anyone ever do that? It's like the words that come out are back to front. They don't make any sense. You think you're communicating clearly and you're really not. She said, your brain is tired. And she was right. I just needed to switch off for a little while. And, and, and now here's the deal. When you have a Sabbath, I have a Sabbath, by the way, I have a Sabbath once a week. Sunday is not my Sabbath. Sunday is a work day for me. Number one, I'm employed to work on this day. But number two, um, it's, a, it's an important day in the week of our church. And I, and I give everything to this day. I put, put a lot of energy in. So it's not my Sabbath. But Friday is my Sabbath. Friday is my Sabbath, and on a Friday, let me just let you know this, on a Friday, I don't check emails. On a Friday, for the greater part, I don't check my phone. I don't look at WhatsApp. I don't look at your text messages. I'm sorry. I don't look at your missed calls. On a Friday, I take my phone, and I put it away somewhere where I'm not going to look at it. On a Friday, I don't look at social media. On a Friday, I try not to read the news as much as I possibly can. On a Friday, I try to give my brain a rest. Come on, how many of you feel like your brain needs a rest? Your brain is getting overloaded all the time, all the time. Your phone is giving your brain constant information. And let me say this, sitting in front of the TV, kind of blobbing out is not giving your brain rest. Scrolling through social media is not giving your brain rest. Those things are not resting your brain. You, you need some time in your week where your mind can just wander freely. Medicine has showed this. Our brain needs time just to wander wherever it wants to wander so it can actually process what has been going on in the week. No, no, no. So here, here's what happens. Coming up on your screen. Here's what happens when you give your brain a rest. Come on, just 24 hours in a week. You can do this. I know you can. Here's what happens when you give your brain a rest. You become more creative. You solve problems more quickly than you have before. You are less likely to burn out. You have increased concentration you have or you are in a better mood, somebody nudge their neighbor and say you need to take a day off, and our performance is boosted. So if you're flagging at work, if you're flagging in life and you're like, man, I'm just not as sharp as I once was. I used to wake up with these ideas. I used to be creative. I used to be on the front foot. I used to have time for my kids and they didn't wear me out. I used to enjoy hearing their stories and now I just want to get through to the end of the day. I want to say to you, you're tired. You need to give your brain, you need to give yourself a day off. Our God knew exactly what he was doing. He's not surprised by the invention of the smartphone. None of those things are a surprise to him, amen? You need to give yourself some time off. Now, I'm just going to jump to my, to my final point, guys. Here's what I want to say for the sake of time. Whether we take a Sabbath day or not, 
Listen to this. Whether we take a Sabbath day or not is dependent on our level of trust in God. I'm gonna say that again. Some of you are like, I don't have time to take a Sabbath. I don't have time to check out for a day. Here's what you're saying to me. You're saying, I don't trust God to look after my life for the one day so that I can be better in the rest of the time. Here's what it's like. It's like tithing. It's like tithing. How many of you have discovered, by the way, many, many hundreds of you have discovered this with tithing. Here's here's what we do with tithing. We give the first 10% to God. And we say, God, I'm trusting you that you're going to make the remaining 90% with you go further than 100% without you. Amen. That's that's the power of tithing. We say, God, 90% with you goes further than 100% without you. Here's what we do when we take a Sabbath. We say, God, I'm trusting you that six days, (laughs) not six days with you, goes further than seven days without you. Can I get a big amen this morning? Six days with God is better than seven days without Him. We've got to learn to trust Him. We've got to learn to trust Him. Come on, some of you are burnt out, worn out. We did a little poll on social media this week and, and we just said, hey, how many of you are feeling worn out, burnt out? And uh, pretty, pretty amazing, 65% of people in our church said they're feeling tired, burnt out, worn out. Come on, I want to ask you, are you having a Sabbath? Are you having a Sabbath? Listen, let me just tell you a little story, testimony, as I get ready to close this message off this morning. Um, my mum and dad taught me some pretty amazing stuff. One of the things they taught me was one day a week you don't study. One day a week you don't study. So I did my GCSEs, always had a day off. Did my A-levels, always had a day off. Always one day a week, didn't study. Now, just to let you know, I am not a super brain. I'm not one of those A, A star kind of people. In fact, if you want to know me, my GCSE results sum me up pretty well. In my GCSEs, I got one A, seven Bs, and one C. I'm a solid B grade student, okay? I'm not the smartest, I'm not the worst, I'm right in the middle. And so I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not here like going, I'm so smart that I can do it in six days. No, I just trusted God. Went to university, uh, got through all my university stuff, got a good degree. Um, ended up going to uh, flying college where I learned how to fly planes. And I remember, I remember, I remember coming to the end of what was probably two of the most intense years of my life. We're all sponsored by major airlines they've all put about a quarter of a million pounds into each one of us and the pressure to do well was pretty high. Remember coming to the end of my my time at Oxford where I was studying and coming to the final exams, final exams and everybody is freaking out. Everybody is studying like you've never seen before. Come on, all my university friends this morning, I'm speaking to you. They're studying every hour under the sun. They're studying like crazy. And I remember the final, final week, my exam started on the Monday. I remember getting up Sunday morning. Everyone's like into the study. They're going for it. And I remember getting up and I thought, okay, got up, had a nice breakfast. And then I wandered down to church, enjoyed a great church service, hung out with some friends after church, came back, had some lunch. We, uh, we actually live very near to a, a beautiful place called Blenheim Palace, if you know it. And Blenheim Palace is a beautiful, stately home, lovely grand. I remember going and buying the newspaper, got the newspaper, walked into the grounds of Blenheim Palace. I remember to this day, I remember lying on my back, I remember watching the planes in the sky, I remember reading the newspaper, just having a great day, just having a great Sabbath, just having a great day, spending time with God, replenishing, getting refreshed. I remember getting back to the air training school and everyone's freaking out. They're like, where have you been all day? Where have you been all day? And I'm like, oh, I've just been, been to church, been with some friends, chilling out with God, and they just can't get their heads around it. Can't get their heads around the fact that I could take a day off before the most significant exams of my life. Now, I just told you I'm a solid B grade student, <laughs> not an A, 
I'm not an A-star student, but I wanna say by the grace of God, I have never failed an exam in my entire life. I, I've never flunked an exam, I've never failed an exam, never failed a flying test, never failed one single one of those things. Not because you're looking at a brainiac, but I believe you're looking at somebody who's learned a principle of God. Give God, I'm appealing to you this morning, give God just one day of your week and say, God, on that day, I'm giving you extra time. I'm giving you extra focus. I'm not doing my ordinary work. I'm not cleaning the bathroom. I'm not hoovering the floor. I'm not working. I'm not receiving email. I'm switching off and I'm focusing on you. And I promise you're gonna see something turn around in your life and we're gonna start to operate from overflow. Amen. Come on, some of you here this morning, you're like barely making it through the week. No, God's promise for us is not to barely make it through the week. It's to live in overflow. Overflow. Let me finish. I've got three quick thoughts. They're going to take one minute. Number one, you've got to make it a priority. You've got to make it a priority. You've got to schedule it. You've got to schedule it. You've got to look at your week and say, where am I going to get time off? Sometimes a Friday doesn't work for me. I might have been traveling, might be preaching somewhere. I don't know. So I've got to look somewhere and say, okay, where's my time off coming? Schedule it. Number two, you've got to prepare for it. Prepare for it. So many people will say, oh, I just need to do this little bit of stuff on my day off. Well, the problem was you didn't prepare for it. You didn't take time to make sure you're free. Listen, on a Thursday, I will work late on a Thursday to make sure I can be off on a Friday. I'll check my emails late. I'll do all of that stuff so that I can be free for one day a week. I'm gonna prepare for it. And number three, this is really important. Come on, I'm speaking to some of you this morning. Don't feel guilty. Some of you are like, oh, I feel guilty. You mean I don't need to look at my phone for a whole day? Don't feel guilty about it. Listen, if you are replenishing other people, and I know many of you are, how can you feel guilty about doing the one thing that tops you up so that you can actually give out for the rest of your week? Don't feel guilty about that. Don't feel guilty about prioritizing God. Don't feel guilty about not checking your email for one day a week. Don't feel guilty about taking some time off. Here's what I, I love what Pastor Lavinia, she says, she says, if, the, if it's an emergency, they'll find a way to get you. How many of you know that's true? <laughs> if it's an emergency, they'll hunt you down. You don't need to worry about it. Don't be guilty. I want you to have the greatest mental health you can possibly have. I want you to be refreshed, full of life, overflowing, not tired, not worn out. Listen, if you're in your 20s and you're like, I'm so tired, I'm so worn out, I'm burnt out. Can I be real frank with you this morning? I'm speaking to you as your pastor. You're doing it wrong. You've got something out of whack in your life. And this may not be the whole answer, but it is an amazing starting place, amen? Let me pray for you before I hand over to Location Pastors this morning. Father, we thank You that You have provided for us a way to live life. We thank You that You modeled it for us, Father. From the beginning of time, You showed us a pattern that would sustain us. And right now, Holy Spirit, we welcome You into our lives to bring rest and replenishment to us. Father, would You minister to us this morning, wherever we are, whatever we're going through, in Jesus' Name. Maybe you're watching this morning, you're saying, I need Jesus in my life. It's really simple. You just say, Jesus, come, be my friend. Come and take over my life. I hand control over to You. Thank you, Mark. That was fantastic. I really hope that that stirred and encouraged you. And so that's the end of the service for us, but we'll be here back next week and we look forward to seeing you. Have a great week, church. If you said yes to Jesus today, we are celebrating with you. We would love to pray with you and send you a Bible and some resources to get you started on your faith journey. Please go to equippers.co.uk forward slash I said yes or follow the link in the chat box so we can get in touch.